Now, to discuss this troubling development, I'm now being joined on the news at 10 by a professor of police studies in the University of Exeter in the United Kingdom, Professor Olu Ogunshaki. Thanks for joining us on the news at 10. Thank you. Now, we appear to be running out of adjectives to qualify these attacks, and our, our thoughts and prayers are with the families affected by the overnight attack. But looking at the string of killings in Plateau coming just so soon after the president's visit, what do you think the security operatives are missing out? Um, the, the issue for us is uh, you look at the country that seems that we are failing at presently with our citizens. The job of the government is to secure the lives and properties of the citizen. But unfortunately, that seems not to be working out well. And I think the issue that we are facing right now is not just an issue whereby we are losing lives. We are losing hope and time. A lot of the people that have lost their wives, I mean their lives, will not come back. But unfortunately, what we fail to do is to take it seriously. We seem to be looking at tactics. A lot of times what the security agencies are doing is looking at tactics instead of actually planning a long-term strategy. And when you have a tra temporary tactics, it doesn't really work because we keep deploying people to these areas and we keep removing them. And until we can actually get a stable, permanent solution to this, that is when lives can continue to be normal for those people. Yeah, well, what are the people to do looking at this overnight attack with the death toll as high as 25? And then listening to the police officers in that particular report, you know, saying, oh, they come in the evening, there's a trend, the people are vulnerable and they vanish. You know, what, what else are you supposed to do when you hear something like that? And what, what exactly would you advise the, the um, the, people like yourself to be doing? The, 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 the solution for me is to sit back and look again critically at the issues on, on the ground. We have a lot of people, we look at the number of the police officers that are available to police that particular area and we need to start deploying more. But unfortunately, the number of police officers we have is not enough presently, and the form of equipment they have is not really up to the job they're supposed to be doing. For instance, the police officer that we interviewed, I mean, you interviewed, was saying that they came at night and they moved, they vanished. But unfortunately, those officers, that the ones that are presently on the ground, are not even equipped with night goggles. They are not equipped with what you will require to police at night. And if you look at their own security for those police officers, if anything then happens to them, then it becomes another tragedy for their families. So the government needs to start looking at critically funding the police organization so they can do the job they are supposed to do. And as much as I'm not advocating for the police officers, but we have to realize that if you ask people to go and do a job, you need to equip them. Because if you don't equip them, you only get what you pay for, unfortunately, and the lives of precious Nigerians are being lost, and we cannot sit here and continue to dish out blame because the security agencies, I believe, are doing their best, but with what they've been given, it's not enough to actually carry out these jobs. The majority of these people are being deployed on special duties, as I was told, to these areas without proper accommodation, without proper equipment, and at the end of the day, they are the ones that are blamed. We need to focus on governance. What has happened in this case is the governance has failed because the issue at hand is not something that the police on their own can do. Because when you look at issues of peace, there are two areas. There's something we call positive peace. Positive peace is the peace that is longer. Then you look at negative peace. What we have now is we have negative peace that nothing is restored. You go there, you deploy people. And then once you deploy them, you move them out, then the, continue, the trouble continues. What do you think it's going to take? I mean, we've lost 25 people, and these are human beings. Um, critics are already saying that we've sort of lost sanctity for human life. What do you think it's going to take to actually do more than pay lip service to the fight against those who come and attack people who, have, who are defenseless? The, the challenge for me personally, and I hope this is a challenge that every Nigerian will take, seriously is the fact that uh, you already know the script. The next bit will be to send a delegate or a special committee to go and see the governor, to go and see the royal fathers, and then they take the photo opportunities. But we need to go back to the drawing table now because when you look at these issues, what we have is something that until we go back, when Mr. President was running two years ago, he spoke about going back to look at the sociological reasons why these things are happening. Up to now, nothing has been done. 
we're looking at people that you, you call it, uh, uh, you, you, you call this kind of issue, like uh, you, they basically have structural violence. Structural violence is what happens when the institutions have failed the citizens. And the injustice is so prevalent in the land that you cannot really control them. And until something is done, whereby people actually sit down with these individuals, instead of going to meet the people that doesn't have control over their lives, to sit down with them to look at solutions. Because as long as you keep sending police officers to go and do government's job, it's not going to work. The government has failed them, and you cannot then sit back and allow this to continue. Because at the end of the day, the government will tell you that we're going to do this, we're going to do this. The people that have lost their life yeah. have gone forever. I bleed for them. I cry for those people. And at the end of the day, this thing can happen to any of us because it's a country that we're looking at this issue now and we're asking ourselves, are we actually living in a failing country? And the answer will be debatable because these are the issues that a failing country goes through. All right. Thank you so very much, Professor of Police Studies at University of Exeter. Olu Ogunshaki for joining us on the News at 10 tonight. Thank you.